Um, I'm honored, though, that she would have asked me, that she would consider me um, to be able to bring the word and the teaching this morning. Um, and to, to all, this will actually be my first actual sermon in English. Because my children are always in Spanish. I translate messages, I translate for pastors and, 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 and preachers, but um, from, from Spanish to English. But I've never actually preached in English to, um, to a, a congregation, because my congregation is Spanish. And if I have to translate and do both bilingual, like, like Lady Kay said, yes, I would do that. But usually it's all in Spanish. So today um, I'm, I'm breaking out of that comfort zone um, and, and, and giving it all to the Lord. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. So, um, so now let's just get to what the Lord has given us for today. If you can uh, join me in, in, in the scriptures and we're going to look for um, Mark chapter 5 verses 25 to 34. And I know everybody knows this story, but uh, this story connects to my life journey um, in, in some sense. And, and we'll talk about that as we move along. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And don't, uh, in, in, in our church, it's okay for you to shout and, and praise the Lord as we, we speak. Because, you know, that lets me know that you're not sleeping. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. So we're going to read the scriptures, Mark 5, uh, 5, 25 to 34. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. Amen. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, Jesus, came into the pre uh, press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his cloth, I shall be whole. And strengthened away, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of all and Jesus, immediately knowing it himself, the virtue had gone out of him, turned him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my well, well. Jesus. His disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and seest thou who touched me? How dare they? Praise God, hallelujah. Who touched me? And he looked around to see her, to see that had, well, had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, daughter, thy faith have made thee whole. Yes. Go in peace yes. and be whole of your life. Mm -hmm. And be whole yes. mm -hmm. on your life. Father God, I thank you for this word. Thank you, I thank you, Father God, because it has been you, Lord, who has pressed it into my heart yes. so that I can share it this morning with the people that are here for you today, Lord. I ask that you open up our hearts and our mind and our understanding, Lord, and that every soul here can receive it to the healing that you have prepared for them in this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And this, when, when Pastor uh, Kay, okay, that's what I'm used to, okay, uh, when she called and she texted me and, and we spoke about what the theme was and how you know what, what was it going to be like and she mentioned to me women of hope www that's what she mentioned www and she mentioned women of hope person wellness 
immediately when she said women of whole person wellness this scripture came to my heart and I was battling with the Lord in many different ways. I'm like, but you know, I wanted to connect it to my testimony, right? My experience and my, my process. And I'm like, oh, oh, you know, I'm not bleeding, you know? But the whole part is what got, yes, got me yes, to it. Yes. And so when I heard the theme, I immediately looked up with this message and I read it and I said, okay, Lord, um, and then we can find this same story in three of the evangelists, the Gospels, right? We can find it in John, um, Matthews, and we can also find it in Luke, and as we read in Mark. But Mark is more uh, descriptive of in the story that helps us view and see and, and get into the, that 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 line, that storyline, right? And and we can. Uh, you know, and I'm gonna I'm gonna ask for some volunteers soon because I I want to demonstrate how this had happened, um, um, how that wholeness came about, and so to unfold this this story, um, this this story happened in in, in Capernaum, right, and uh, near the Sea of Galilee, and Jesus was teaching when he was approached by a man. So before we in the, begin, the, the beginning of the chapter, right? He, a, a man approached him that identified, it was identified as a worker, and he, he came up to the Jesus, and he's, he, his daughter was sick, yeah. and, he, and he knew that Jesus would be the answer to that, right? And so he called out to Jesus, and he said, I need you to come and heal my daughter, right? right? And Jesus right away turned around to go to this gentleman's house. Right. Glory to God. He came in distress, begging, this guy was begging, I need you to help his 12 year old daughter, right, who was very sick and they thought that she was dead. Yeah. To the point that she was dead. And Jesus immediately moved in the direction of this man's house. Yeah. He crowd, the crowd he was um, teaching with surrendered him and, and like went with him like I just, I'm going like this because I could just feel the crowdness of the tightness that, yeah, yeah. of all the followers, right? Yes, yes. And as he moved along the crowd, it got even thicker yeah. to the extent that it was almost like suffocating. Yeah. Now, can you picture yes. how, how that crowd was, right? Like, imagine we put all of us right here in the center and there's more people coming and more people coming, right? Um, and so, this, 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 Stan was so suffocating, but while he was on that mission, yeah. a woman, this woman, in the crowd seeking to be delivered from her 12 years of what I call misery. Yes. Yes. Praise God. From her illness. 12 years. 12 years. Can you imagine? And this, we don't, we don't, the Bible doesn't say what kind of sickness it is. Just it says blood, right? That she was bleeding. Um, it could have been a gynecological problem, um, you know, especially bleeding from her womb. We don't know. It could have been, right? But obviously, that's where the blood would probably come out, right? And so, but this, it, what mattered is that it lasted 12 years. Her journey of bleeding took her to every single doctor. To so every single healer she can find, yeah. whether they were legitimate or not, she tried everything. Yeah. She tried everything, and what happened? Well, she lost everything. Yeah. It was a loss. Yes. She still broke, yes. and she had no other resources yes. but to look to who? Jesus. To Jesus. And how many of us? How many of us can think back and ask ourselves, in desperation, we have seeked out to everything and everyone except for Jesus. Hallelujah. The scripture says she was broke. She went broke. She had nothing else to spend. And all that for no healing. Jesus was her hope. 
and it took her to be broke. Yes. And when I mean broke, I mean broken. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And see, and this is where I get stuck in. Because Jesus should always Jesus should always be our first and only. Because that's what the Bible teaches us. Right? Hallelujah. And so this lady creeped behind Jesus in the crowd, believing that she could touch his, if only she touches his cloth, she will be healed. She will receive healing, and she did. And she did. As soon as she received healing, Jesus what? Oh. And, and not again, crowd. Can I get some volunteers? Can I get about six, seven volunteers? I don't want to do this right here. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit different. Amen. I need some volunteers. Just come on. Yeah, I need a lot of volunteers because you know we gotta make a crowd here. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm gonna be the lady. Be the oh, lady. yeah, that's gonna be a crowd. Oh, okay. yeah, so around okay. like back to like shoulder to shoulder. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Because according to that law, yes. oh my goodness, women couldn't even handle money. They couldn't even have a relationship. They couldn't even attend any services, be around people. That was horrible. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the punishment for that was death. How many of us would take that risk? How many of us would dare to take that risk and push to get to Jesus? Hallelujah. She took her, she, she, she didn't care. She took that risk. Her willingness to go out of the link. Her illness was common among a lot of women, but it was very difficult to care for her, but she didn't care. No doctor did it for her. No cure did it for her. But when she touched that, now, and this is for another sermon, another teaching, the, the, the touching of the garment, it, there's more to that. Yes, there is. There's a reason why she said, if only I touched. Yeah, that's right. There's a reason for that. Yeah. But that's for y'all to go yeah. study. Because <laughs> we're not all day. Yeah. All right, we got homework. But there is. If not, my husband has to study on it. You can invite him and he can come to him. <laughs> Don't tell him I'll put him out there. <laughs> Hallelujah. But at the end of it all, what this, this woman really moved on was in her faith. Yes. 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 Was really in her faith. Mm -hmm. And what is faith? Hebrew 11 one tells us, now faith is the assurance of what we hope for and the certainty of what we do not see. She practically didn't see Jesus because she was in the crowd pushing. Yeah. All she cared for was that faith touch. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Wasn't Jesus she wanted to touch? She, her faith was so big. She didn't need to see Jesus. Her faith knew that just by that touch, she can be healed. This woman was very pers uh, persevering. She persevered in that crowd, right, that she went through. Now, we had a little bit of people up here mm -hmm. that I had to push. I'm sorry I pushed out. <laughs> no one got hurt. It's okay. But in that crowd, and again, I visualize this, and I see it, and I'm like, Lord, this woman really, and, and we don't even know the size of this woman. We don't know if she was very thin or if she was very... Uh, heavy set or, or, or whatever, but I'm assuming it's thin because she was bleeding for 12 years. I'm sure she was drained out, right? She looked. However, even if she was that weakest weakness yeah. comes upon us, right? Mm -hmm. All that that's leaving our body makes us weak. But that weakness didn't stop her. Yeah. That weakness didn't stop her from pushing yes. through that crowd. A fearful but faith-filled woman. After she touched Jesus and he turned around, the scripture says she came trembling. She came trembling to him. And she doubt and she told him her story. And Jesus responds. Oh my God. And sometimes our fear of us walking into what God has for us stops us. But that woman, she did it. She said it and she did it. She said, if only, and not only if only, she said, if only and pushed. And touched. And got her healed. Hallelujah. Her perseverance is an example to us as women. Glory, as of the body of Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To continue to push. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the truth is, 
Like I said before, she had nothing to lose. She had nothing to lose whether she she made it to Jesus or not, and everybody found out that she was dead and that she was unclean. She had nothing to lose but hope. Hope. What's hope stands for here? Prayer. Huh? Hope. Praise God. So if you find yourself in a desperation situation like this woman, if anyone here today feels like, I need something from God so much, and I have not received it, you've been waiting an eternity to receive whatever that petition or that prayer, that need, that situation, you're going for it today, that you have going through for it. Don't stop pushing. That's right. Now, have you ever wondered why the disciples, when Jesus asked, who touched me? The disciples thought that this was a ridiculous question. How dare they? Um, there was a crowd, so why would you ask who touched me? Like there's so many people, everybody's touching you. Mm-hmm. But there was something different that came yes, out of yes. when that in particular person touched yes, me. That's yes. right. That's right. So who touched me? Hallelujah, everybody's touching you, sir. Jesus, no, 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 no. Yes. No, 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 no. Even though I'm crowded here, even though I am suffocating because everybody's just the top of me, something different came out of me. Something different came out of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Something whole. Women of whole came out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the word says that she was healed immediately. Hallelujah. Immediately. And sometimes we're not going to be healed immediately. We got to go through a process. And that process is for us to be here in the presence of the Lord and still push. That's right. And still glorify. And still thank Him for the good, the ugly, the bad, and the great. And I say great last because that's the best part. Because sometimes you have to wait 12, 20, 30, 40 years for your child to come to Christ, for your dream to occur, for your burden to be taken away. But God still has a purpose. There is a purpose for that timing that you have in waiting on the Lord as long as you keep on pushing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now allow, uh, allow me to explain a little bit about what Jesus says, touch, touch me. The word touch comes from the root word hapto, which means to fasten, to, grab onto, or cling onto. Okay? So he was not referring to the act of someone putting their hands on him. In fact, the story did not even say that she touched him. Right? He didn't, he didn't touch Jesus. Actually, she touched his heart. Right? So yet Jesus asked, who touched me? Yet he still asked, who touched me? Now, you ever wonder why he said that? Who touched me? What Jesus was really asking was, who clung onto me with their whole with their whole daily of unwearing form of faith. Who clinged on to me with their whole women of whole whole unwavering faith. Faith. Hallelujah. This woman was so desperate in her situation. And this was her absolutely last option. Yes, yes. Sadly to say that it took her to be the last. But she received healing. Yes. 
She had the opportunity, she was given the opportunity to escape from that situation that she found herself in. So of course, she clung onto God in faith. Mm -hmm. And many people in the crowd put their hands in Jesus and nothing happened. Oh, yeah, well. Where was their faith? Mm -hmm. Even the gentleman who came, the guy who came to ask for prayer. For his daughter. They knew that Jesus can heal her. But through your faith, your daughter could have been healed without him even going there. But he said, if you you gotta go and you gotta pray for her and you gotta touch her. And you not this woman. She was the opposite. Praise God. How many of those women do we have here? Walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, yes. You don't have to collect, wait for Jesus to come down from the heavens right. to receive your blessing. Yes. You don't have to wait for Jesus to appear to you in a dream yes. or in a, no. Just the Bible teaches that when he spoke to Martha, what did he tell Martha about faith? If only you had what type, what size of faith? Size of a mustard seed. Of a mustard seed. Yeah. That's all you need right. to receive. Right. Hallelujah. God is so good. Her faith connected her with the heavenly power that cannot but honor authentic faith. Authentic faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Her unfold of anguish across all of these years that she suffered and a second came to an end. 12 years, and in a second, it was over. It was done. Hallelujah. God is so good. Hallelujah. And thank God. Thank God for sending his son. Because like you mentioned, this lady could have, she risked it. She was a risk taker. But God has promises for all situations. And I don't know what circumstances or what current situation we all find ourselves here. But I do know, I do believe that God has a purpose. Yes, yes. He will complete his promise. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. His purpose will be fulfilled in your life. Hallelujah. It will be. Even if it's the day before you close your eyes to meet with him. He will fulfill his purpose in whatever circumstance or situation you might be going through. No doubt about that. Hallelujah. We here today, 2024, are more than privileged. If only women, men, society, the world realized what privilege we have. Because we have full entrance to his presence. Yes, mm -hmm. We can talk directly to him. Right. Not through any other person, but directly to him. We're privileged. Yes. People back then didn't have that. Mm -hmm. Though they had Jesus with them. But they still didn't have that connection. To wrap. There was still that separation. Yeah. But we were given full access to God's grace and mercy. Yeah. Hallelujah. By fully giving his son to die on that cross yes. for us. Yes. Yes. For that veil to be broken. Yes. So that we have full access Amen. to communicate Absolutely. and to push. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We have full access as the Bible teaches us when we pray. It tells us to ask, it tells us to seek, and it tells us to knock. And what will happen? You will be answered. But we need to take the step. We need to do it. Don't expect the Holy Spirit is going to be the one pushing you to do it, right? But we have to do it. Yes, we do. Our flesh is going to not want it. Our flesh is not going to want to do it. But well, we have to move. We have to move. 
we have to walk. Yeah. We have to take that step. Yes. We have to push. Yes. Whatever the circuit says is push it yes. out the way. Yes. Let Jesus. Yeah. Let Jesus be that healer. Yeah. Let Jesus be that comforter. Yes. 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 Let Jesus be the one to to fill you up, to strengthen you, to cover you. Hallelujah. In your need and desperation. Hallelujah. No matter what they shall be. This woman did not have that privilege. She didn't have that privilege that we have. And yet we take it for granted. We take it for granted. Yes, we do. Hallelujah. God have mercy. His mercy endures forever. And every morning is new. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Hallelujah. This woman couldn't have a human relationship with anyone. She had no one to speak on her behalf to help her. We do. Yes. We do because we're privileged. Hallelujah. We have that intermediary who came and died and, cut and was crucified for us. That interceder, we have that. She didn't have that. So let's take advantage of that blessing. Let's take advantage of that blessing. She was unwanted, but Jesus claimed her. She was unwanted by society, by her community, but Jesus says, "Come on, Jesus. Jesus, that's right. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah." She wasn't allowed. Can you imagine being not allowed to come to church and worship God when your heart so slowly desires that and you're not allowed because of that, that circumstance that you are in? Absolutely not. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said to her, daughter. He called her, daughter. Your faith has healed you. Go in peace. The final command really translates to go into peace. This really meant that she not only received physical healing, but also meant that she received salvation. Salvation. That day her soul was saved. The peace that comes with the assurance of salvation. Hallelujah. And she probably didn't know that. She probably didn't know that. But Jesus made sure she was aware of it. Go in peace. Hallelujah. She was given the rest that Jesus promised to those who trust in him with their whole heart. She was given the rest that Jesus promised to those who trust in him with their whole heart. Yes. Woman of whole. Hallelujah. With her whole heart. And when God heals, yes. your entire life affects because faith spans all actions of your being. When he heals, it's complete. Yeah. It's full. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Life isn't easy. And it's not going to be easy. Because if it was easy, then what was the purpose? What was the purpose of his dying? And his sacrifice? Right? It's not going to be easy. We're going to go through situations. But knowing that we have someone next to us. Behind us. Amen. To the left of us. Yeah. And in front of us. Yeah. Walking with us. Yes. And in us. Yes. Because Christ is in us. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And we praise God for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Healing process take long. But as women of God, as men of God, we must have courage to take godly steps of faith. Strength to push through difficult situations to assess a miracle. We must knowledge of things, have knowledge of things that might be standing between you and your faith in God. We need to sometimes stop and examine ourselves and ask ourselves, what is keeping me from pushing? Yes. What is keeping me from me walking in my faith? Yes. Acknowledge it. 
and come to the presence of the Lord and present it to Him. Have the strength to give God your complete attention just as He gives His complete attention to us. Because when He says, call and I will listen. Knock and I will open. His attention is all fully given to us. Is our attention all given to Him? Hallelujah. And this story really touched me when I read it and I tried to connect it to my life story. Because in the beginning, when this woman was introduced in, in, the, in the Bible, when you read it, did you feel kind of sorry for her? Pity, like, oh, poor thing, oh my God. And so, in my, my life story, in my, God is in my story, and preaching in the process. There are so many lessons that I learned from this because on April 25th of 2023, my birthday, by the way, <laughs> that was on my birthday, um, I received a call from the doctor. I received a call that they said, Miss Valentine, you have come out positive. Uh, yes. Uh, stage three of breast cancer. And it was the most aggressive type of cancer that I had. Notice I said had. Which this type of cancer is called triple negative. Um, and so and it's very aggressive. So it, it, it moves very quickly and it, it expanded very quickly. And so right away I said, no, no, no. I don't have cancer. I'm just starting a new process. My Lord, my Lord. And it wasn't because I was in denial mm -hmm. and I didn't want to accept that I had cancer. Because I, I, yes, right? Mm -hmm. But I have a bigger God. Yes, you do. Yeah. And I knew that it was not for death, as right away everybody goes to. Oh my God, I'm going to die. Absolutely not. Amen. However, when they told me, I didn't want to tell anybody. I received a call. I told my husband, um, and I didn't want to tell. I didn't want to share my 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 thoughts with anybody. And it was really because I didn't want anybody to feel pity. I didn't want anybody to like overwhelm me with like, oh my God. Us in Spanish, we say, I've been Oh, poor thing. And I, I didn't want that. And I also didn't want to scare anybody and make anybody worry uh, about me, especially my mom. Um, that was, I had to pray really hard about that to give her the news and I had to go in person to give her the news. Um, and thankfully she took it well. Uh, God prepared, prepared her for, for to receive it. Uh, so I thank God for that. But one day, uh, you know, I was coming out of uh, one of the treatments, and um, I was speaking to my, my husband, and I was like, I really didn't know how to tell my mom, and, and you know, I didn't want him to tell anybody. Yet he had told everybody, by the way. I didn't want to pick up the phone, and he called everybody, and it wasn't, you know, it, it was because he, he feared. Right away, he feared, and, and uh, he got scared, and he, he just wanted to pray. He wanted everybody to start praying. Um, I didn't know he had told me. <laughs> I didn't know that he had told everybody in the world. Um, but uh, to, to my understanding, nobody knew, but certain people that I, you know, had, uh, that I knew that were going to help me in prayer and stuff. So um, I limited that, but then everybody, I was like, came to find out that everybody knew the same day that I told him. <laughs> um, and so moving forward, you know, my husband in conversation, I came from one of my treatments and he says, you know, um, I, I know that you don't want people to know, but you know what, really, this is the time that God needs you to preach. Yes. Yes. This is the time that God needs you to, to be the sample. Um, and he said, though, I, I say the Lord used him. So now is the time for you to to preach in the process. So we labeled, we, we hashtagged it and, and we, we tagged it at, at my page. 
um, that is in my story, preaching in the process. Because it's easy to preach and tell the story once it's done over and done with because, you know? That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. But God wants us to preach in the process so that people could see that power through you. Preaching after the fact, preaching after the situation has come to an end or has been fulfilled, is common. It's common. And some people sometimes say, mm, is that really happening? Mm, is she exaggerating? But when you do it in the process, they're seeing it. And they're hearing it. And they're receiving it. Hallelujah. So preaching in the process is more powerful for God to glorify himself. For people to see his glory, not mine. I'm nobody. But to see his work through me. In me yes. and for me. Yes. So he could be glorified. Yes. So he could be glorified. Yes. Because people are not just going to hear it, no. they're going to see it. Yes. Right. In the process, as you preach, though you're in pain or whatever the situation might be, people are going to see it. And when the healing comes or the situation comes to an end, they were part of it. So preaching in the process has become my, my model. I never stop praising and worshiping God. I never ask God why. Never ask, ask I, and I always tell my people, I say never ask why, always ask for what. When you ask God why, you're gonna get so many excuses coming to your head. But when you ask God for what purpose, you're going to have the yes. purpose. Yes. You're yes. going to find that reason. And you're going to be understandable of it. Yes. And you're going to be able to move forward and continue to cut out your faith yes. in the Lord. Yes. For it to be glory to God. So I, I stop, you know, I, I can't say any crime. I just didn't want it to affect anyone directly close to me. So I didn't want to share my story. I just, I didn't want that. Because in this walk, we all need a process of faith to maintain and hang on to our faith. To cling on to that cross. We all need it. Because like I said, if life was this easy, then we wouldn't need Jesus. But we need that hope. We need that situation to occur so we can hang on more onto him and to our faith. Hallelujah. Without it, we will think we will just think it's so easy that we will leave, live a, a life of comfortness mm -hmm. and think, I'll do this now, or this will happen, but God got me. Yes. And we get comfortable, too comfortable. When the Bible truly that teaches us that it's not going to be easy, but to trust in him and he will do all the things right. Amen. There will be times that I would feel tired and weak. And it was only physically. Because spiritually, I would fight. And I would push. Hallelujah. So surely my spirit was never weakened. I cried mostly. My biggest cry was when I lost my hair. Because my hair was my pride. And I understood that that pride had to go home. So God took that. Jesus. He took that pride from me. Yes. And I yes. understood that. But at the same time, God has something better for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Something new. I knew that he was making something new. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> <laughs> so today, before I finish, I would like to leave you with Psalms 23. Mm -hmm. Psalms 23 became my preaching, my, my preaching in my process uh, testimony. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He is my shepherd, my pastor, my father, my healer, my protector, my everything. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, as I walk through the valley 
of death. Yeah, yeah. And I repeat it through. Mm -hmm. The valley of the shadow. Yes. Shadow. Yes. That's right. That's right. Shadow of death. Mm -hmm. The Lord is allowing me to pass through this. Yes. Just through the shadow. Yes. Yes. But not leaving me there. Mm -hmm. yes. Not leaving me there. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I say, I will fear no evil. Yep. For you are with me. Mm -hmm. Yes. He is forever with me. Yes. In me and through me. Mm -hmm. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That comfort that no man can give me. Yeah. The peace that surpasses all understanding. Mm -hmm. You prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. To anoint my head of oil, my cup overflow. And as you can see, the oil is in full effect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because my hair is growing and growing pretty quickly. Yeah. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Women of God, women of whole person wellness, be courageous, stand firm, be strong, care for yourself. Care for yourself. But trust in God is in control. We got this. Because God got us. Let's be like that woman and push until something happens. And remember that when God heals, it is complete. Touching every area of our life, even to eternity. Salvation is here. Today, if you don't have it, you can receive it. And that's what we call for. In Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. We're grateful for standing all over the building. Thank you, Lord God. We thank God for Pastor Millie that brought the word on today. So we would be remiss if we didn't take a moment. If there is anyone in this house today that does not know Jesus, after the word that came through the house through Pastor Millie, I'm going to say today is the day of salvation. Do not wait. If you need to know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, we invite you to come to the front right now and accept Jesus. But really all that means is, God, I believe you are who you say you are. We ask, Lord God, that you would lead us into the life everlasting that you have for us. If you know that you prayed that prayer in your heart today, maybe you didn't walk to the front, find one of the ministers that are here. Um, our pastor is in the back. Talk to one of us today. Our prayer team leader is here. Wave your hand, prayer team leader. Amen. Hallelujah. Hope Church is a great church. You're welcome to join us. If you want to join, you can see anybody that waved their hand a little bit ago. Let's praise God for the word. Amen. bags from Somerset County. Those are the blue bags. Those are yours. We also have little bags from Hope Church, a little zipper case. If you didn't get that, let us know. There is a small meal and then lunch at the very end. So I'm going to invite those of us who would like to go to the fellowship hall. You can go to the fellowship hall. We're going to pray over the food and get started to eat. On the second floor are our resource tables. There's amazing resources here. I'm going to ask that you visit those resource tables, please, because there's great information for whole person wellness. And then we're going to ask that we come back together around 11.50 or so, okay? Back down to the sanctuary, 11.50. We're a little bit different with our time. But we thank God for the word, so let's get some food. Let's go upstairs to the resources. Make sure you get your bags, and we want to see you back in just a second. Now, God, we thank you for the word. Cover it and seal it in Jesus' name. We thank you for our hearts that have received it. We thank you for every gift that will be left in this place, God. We thank you for the food that is prepared now and for lunch that will come. We pray your healing, your deliverance, your strength in the name of Jesus. Jesus' name, amen. amen. 
All right, our visiting women, we invite you all to eat first. Home church women, let's do resources first and then switch in Jesus' name. Amen.